who knows go to the internet find the right answer ask the person who is expert in the field and give the reply don't be apologetic be confident you're muslim and give a reply with hikmah with reason logic and science based on quran and say hadith hope that answers the question yes brother assalamu alaikum my name is shar khan and i'm a student uh, first of all i would like to congratulate dr zak nayak because not only the Muslims, but everyone here is actually proud of you. So basically my question is, uh, recently in the Indian news channel, there was a case like the daughter-in-law was raped by her father-in-law and it was a Muslim. So basically the Malvis gave uh, it like that she has to marry her father-in-law and her husband is no more her husband. Do you have your say on that? The brother again has picked up a very important issue of the media. And people may be aware that a few months back, there was a girl by the name of Imrana. She was raped by her father-in-law and the fatwa was given by the majority of the Indian scholars, Ulmas. And one Darul Ulm gave the fatwa that because she was raped by the father-in-law, she cannot go back to her husband. She is haram for her husband. Now the moment the media finds something which is interesting and can malign Islam, they pick it up and they blow it out of proportion as though there's nothing else in Islam but this issue. With the Indian press, what they did? Most of the channels carried this news. That the ulmas, the shuyukhs, the maulanas of Islam, they say, a girl, she is raped by the father-in-law. She's a victim. But what does Islam say? Instead of supporting her, now Islam is telling she cannot go back to her husband. She's haram for the husband. And they use this news and they blew it out of proportion even till this day today. Again, I always say that if you don't know how to answer the media, the people should be trained. And later on, after a few weeks, there were some other Muslim scholars who said, no, no, no. She is not haram for the husband, she can go to her husband. Whoever is giving fatwa that she is haram for the husband is wrong. We are fighting like cats and dogs in front of the non-Muslims. We are washing our dirty linen in public. The joke is that both the groups of scholars are quoting the same verse of the Quran to give their fatwa. The group of scholars who say that she is haram for the husband, they are quoting a verse from the Quran from Surah Nisa. Chapter number 4, verse number 22, which says that you cannot do nikah with the woman who your father has done nikah with. Now in Arabic, nikah has got two meanings. One meaning is marriage and the other meaning is sexual intercourse. And you ask any Arab who is well versed with Arabic, he'll tell you yes. Nikah has got two meanings. One is marriage, the other is sexual intercourse. Now this first group of scholars, which are in majority, belonging to a group of Darul Ulum, they take the meaning of nikah as sexual intercourse. So if you take the meaning of nikah as sexual intercourse, the verse of the Quran says that you cannot have sexual intercourse with your sister. You cannot have sexual intercourse with your paternal auntie, with your maternal auntie. And you cannot have sexual intercourse with that woman who has had sexual intercourse with your father. So based on this, they say that father did sexual intercourse with the woman, now that woman cannot do sexual intercourse with the son, therefore the husband becomes haram. The other group is fighting, no, it is nikah, and we are fighting like cats and dogs. We should use a hikmah in the plan. Point number one. What happened with Imrana was not sexual intercourse, it was zina bil jabr, rape. There's a difference between rape and sexual intercourse. And rape is not called nikah in Arabic. Point number one. That answers. No, no, no. You're playing with words. It is the same. No problem. See, as I told you, if someone says something wrong, there's a technique of debating. If someone says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, instead of arguing, I will say, okay, take 200,000 dirhams, take 200,000 dirhams, now give me 500,000 dirhams. He said, no, no, no. Turn the tables over. So when I was asked this question, I told that I agree with you for sake of argument that nikah means sexual intercourse. So the verse of the Quran would read that you cannot have sexual intercourse with your sister, with your paternal auntie, with your maternal auntie, and with the woman who has had sexual intercourse with your father. That means Quran gives permission you can have sexual intercourse with your neighbor woman, 
with the woman on the street they said no 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 i said why if you mean nikah me sexual intercourse so quran says don't do sexual intercourse with your sister with your paternal auntie maternal auntie and the woman who your father had intercourse with but you can have sexual intercourse with the neighbor woman with the woman on the street and the answer is no so the right meaning is nikah means marriage which reads you cannot marry your sister you cannot marry your paternal auntie your maternal auntie and you cannot marry the woman that has married your father but surely you can marry the neighboring woman you can marry the woman on the street so with hikmah without fighting who is right you give this and no ulama will ever say that you can do sexual intercourse zina with a girl on the street so use your hikmah and the problem is solved but unfortunately we are fighting like cats and dogs in front of the media and making a mockery of islam hope that answers the question thank you very much sir the next question we have from the brother on this mic assalamu alaikum my name is samiul ainayat i am a sales executive in a electrical company uh, my question is normally the media is influenced by the state the media is controlled by the state and uh, especially in a muslim country i mean in the middle east uh, where the arabs are they so how now what i have heard uh, in the talk is generally it was for the uh, general public but how the rulers of the state can improve the muslim media in this level see as i said in my talk that the muslims have got media not that they don't have but they are mainly concentrating on the muslim themselves in india we have urdu media read only by the muslims in pakistan urdu media read by the muslims we have your arabic media arabic channels are there many good and bad many but they are mainly focusing on the arabs that is fine if the channel is good in arabic it should continue i'm not saying it is wrong if it's a good channel on the lines of the sharia like madad channel etc the good channels that is not sufficient what i'm telling you should have a media in the language which is the international language so that you can change the view of the international people you can change the view of the world only by telling that muslims are good among the arabs where most of them are muslims it's not something grave we should have a media in the language which is the international language so my request is that fine you may be ruler of an arab country but why don't you launch an english islamic channel which propagates the true teaching of islam and it is shown throughout the world in america in europe in australia in middle east in asia why not so that we can change the view and at the same time convey the message of islam which is for the every muslim thank you there is a brother who asked on the slip his name is kaiser rahman in the 21st century we have people from all over the world to earn their bread and butter from the islamic world but tell us how we muslims don't have any media parallel to bbc or cnn why i have given the full talk on islam and media and the person is asking why it is like the full story of romeo and juliet is over and you asking me romeo was a girl or a boy <laughs> whether the full talk i gave on islam and media why we don't have it that fault so the full talk was based on that maybe the question was written before my talk started therefore i prefer you know asking on the mind. many people have the question in their mind before and they write it down and irrespective of the talk is they give the question so the full talk was based on that if you want to hear it again you can take the video cassette and see it as many times as you want Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. My name is Hisham Jafar Ali. I wanted to ask you if we are allowed to watch cartoons. <laughs> the brother has really asked a very good question on the topic. That are we allowed to watch cartoons? Today, the international survey they say the maximum damage done to any child is. the satellite media on an average an american child sits 7 hours in front of the television more time than what he goes to school most of the channels that take him away from islam including the cartoon channels most of them what you see there's so much of violence etc so a person sees a violent movie regularly whether it be cartoon or other movies and he has a fight with his friend and he takes out the gun of his father and he kills his friend in bombay there was a serial for the children somewhat similar to cartoon called as shakti man somewhat similar to superman so one young child he jumps from his house in a tall building thinking shakti man superman will come and save him no one comes and saves him and he dies and when an interview was taken